Dear the Chinese government, Hi, I'm a 14-year-old Chinese girl attending a public high school in the state of Maryland. I like to draw, play chess, compose music. I like all my classes and have made lots of good friends in them. In so many aspects, I am the most ordinary person you will ever meet. However, I know of extraordinary people, and this is the story of how two years ago, I fell in love. Stupid, right? How can a 12-year-old know what love is? But I have a friend, and he is, well, there is a piece of land west of China, and the people who live there are called Uyghurs. You call them terrorists, outcasts, and the minorities of China. They follow the teachings of Islam. You think that's stupid. You threw them into so-called education camps because they were different from you. You told the world over and over that this was for their own good. You forced them to give up their beliefs because you believed in something else. You are Chinese. He is weaker. You remember your childhood vividly. So does he. You remember playing in the neighborhood garden with your friends. Tall, green trees sheltered you and your friends as you kicked a soccer ball around the neighborhood fountain, a gorgeous marble structure with crystal clear water and colorful koi swimming around. You remember accidentally kicking the ball deep into a garden bed, the ball getting lost within the blossoming flower. Your neighbor kindly retrieved the ball from you and you thanked them shyly. He remembers playing with his friends too, the streets that were marked with nothing but dirt and dust. They had nothing but their imagination and a soccer ball his parents had snuck in from the store and that they used to imagine so much more. They could do whatever they wanted and whatever they wanted became a reality. They imagined playing soccer in a beautiful neighborhood with a beautiful fountain with crystal clear water and colorful coins swimming around. But that perfect utopia shattered when he kicked a soccer ball in front of some soldiers patrolling the area. He remembers hot water on his skin, the burning sun sinking into his flesh, leaving a terrible, terrible scar. You remember going to school and learning how to do addition. Your teacher gave you guys candy, apples, pencils to count. You were so proud when she gave you a sticker for being the fastest one and adding up all of the goodies. She was so kind and caring to all of your classmates. She even told your parents how proud she was when they had come to pick you up later that night. He remembers going to school and doing addition too. He added the numbers so quickly and would still get lashed at for lack of speed. The teachers were stripped, although ironically they couldn't have cared less. He remembers leaving with tears running down his cheeks from when the teachers told him that he was a failure, that he would never be good enough. You remember staring at the vast green land outside your schoolroom window, wishing with all your heart that you could be free out there instead of stuck inside this costume, learning about things you thought you would never need. He remembers staring at his school being burnt to the ground in horror, knowing that there was nowhere else he could go and nothing he could do about it. But somehow, he ended up here, in the same place as me. A Chinese girl who knew nothing became friends with a Uyghur boy like him who had gone through everything I could have never imagined. And when I met him two years ago, 
I fell in love. Stupid, right? How can a 12-year-old know what love is? But our first conversation started out of pure boredom. We had been placed next to each other in a class where we learned absolutely nothing. So he told me about the concentration camps, what he had gone through, what happened to his friends and family. I listened and sympathized with him. I felt bad for him, but nothing more. After all, what could I do about it? Then, one day in that class, I was struggling with homework. And even though I hadn't said anything, he noticed and he helped me through it step by step. Afterwards, I got it and I was surprised by his patience and kindness because even though he could have not done anything about it, he still decided to help me. After a while, the conversation started to flow. He told me about his likes and dislikes, his favorite songs, his favorite food, whether he preferred cats or dogs, math or ELA, and by the way, he loved math a lot more. And I remember thinking, wow, he really was just a normal kid after all. The more I knew about him, the more I realized what the Chinese government is doing is wrong. And I realized that I can do something about it. Which is why I am writing this to you. I realized that I can be naive, gullible, and foolish, foreign to the truth. I realized that the media may be biased. I realized that I do not and will never know what the truth really is. I realized that love makes people blind and I am just a stupid 14-year-old girl in love. But I know that two years ago, I did fall in love. A different kind of love. Not a love for him, but a love for humanity. A love for culture, for society, for people, a love for everyone in this world, including you. A love that helps me realize we are all human. The people in the Chinese government, the people in the Uyghur concentration camps, me, him. If we became friends, why couldn't you? I am not asking you for money, for any materialistic goods. I am asking you for change. Change is what these people deserve. They deserve to be out of the concentration camps. They deserve a safe place they can call home. They deserve to play in the streets freely without fear. They deserve to live in a beautiful neighborhood. They deserve kindness and peace. They deserve friendship. They deserve love. Why, you may ask? The answer is simply because they are human. Just like me, just like you. Yes, we may be different. Our skins are different colors. Our eyes are different tones. Our societies have different beliefs. Our cultures have different traditions. But it is because that we are different that the world can be so beautiful. Two years ago, I fell in love with that beauty. And to this day, it is still the thing I love the most. <clears throat> as I started to get to know him better, I started to see him more as a friend and 